Hey, this is Ryan, founder of ZBrush Workshops. I want to share with you a story this time. And uh, it's the story of my discovery of the infraorbital triangle. So you can go back on YouTube several years and see a video I posted, I think in 2007, where I show the uh, sculpting of the face. I use this bone matte cap, and then I use red wax to sculpt the muscles, and then I use the sculpty material to actually put skin over the top. And uh, in that workshop, or that demonstration when I was doing that, I had uh, Elliot Goldfinger's anatomy book splayed out next to me, and I had like three other texts. And I'm just going over this, trying to think about the structure of different places and how they're labeled and, and all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, along the path, I discovered this, this thing, the zygomatic major. I didn't discover it. I, I knew about the zygomatic major. But I discovered, or at least it sunk into my brain this time, that the zygomatic major is essentially connecting the nodule at the side of the mouth with the cheek. Pretty much like that. So I'm not going to do the mouth, but you know, I get this nodule at the side of the mouth connecting into the cheek. The real nature is a little bit different, but this is a good schematic diagram. And uh, so I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, that's cool because you know what? That does one really cool thing. That defines the front of the face and the side of the face. Really important. So from below, I now have this point that I can reference and that will always be there. So even if I'm looking at this from below, you know, I still know that that zygomatic bone or that zygomatic major, sorry, is front plane, side plane. And that's really a key thing for us to keep in mind. So then I'm going along and I'm looking at these other pieces to this puzzle. And, uh, and then I notice, oh, there's this straight line in the orbit of the eye, like that. You know, I'm just putting a piece of clay over the top of it. But there's that line right there. And there's another line, the nasal labial fold. And it makes a triangle. And if you fill that triangle, if you just fill it in with little bits of warm clay, <laughs> warming it as I do this, you fill it in with warm clay, then you get this really neat thing. You get basically a realistic front plane for the face. Compare this with the other side, you have the same triangle. Better sculpted, but the same triangle. Zygomatic major, nasal labial fold, the eye. Okay, I discovered this, and I haven't seen this in any anatomy book. You know, I'm dyslexic. I don't read every anatomy book from uh, beginning to end. Uh, I look at the pretty pictures, and then I go in and I go further. Uh, but I'm looking at this, and I'm like, oh, I made a discovery. I discovered new terrain, a new thing that I can, uh, that I can call my own, and I can patent and copyright it, and we'll even trademark it and then it'll be part of my own company. All that stuff. So I'm coming up with these names. And one of the names I come up with I still love. This is called the Triangle of Contention. So Triangle of Contention I think is great because you know so much happens there. You can smile, you can frown, you can do a whole bunch of different things. And I'm thinking well what better thing to call it? Triangle of Contention. So I'm writing down these lists of names. And then I go over to Elliot Goldfinger's book and I look at some random page. And there you go. He has it on one of his illustrations. Somebody has already named this thing. And they chose the most boring name on the planet. So they call it the infraorbital triangle. What does that mean? That means that basically it is a triangle below the orbit of the eye. That's the only thing it means. It doesn't talk about its emotional qualities, its ability to, uh, you know, its part in our expressive machine. It's a simple thing. Very disheartening. I was, I was crushed. Just crushed. 
that somebody had actually invented that or more that I had spent so much time coming up with a cool name only to <laughs> lose out and have it invented by somebody else. Anyways, it's these little things, it's these little forms, these triangles that are really important to us as sculptors. They make the difference. They define you know, how quickly and how efficiently we work. They're part of our 3D math machine, which is a necessary part of us as sculptors, building this 3D math machine. Because you may not know it, but there's a reverse triangle that forms another really important shape right below that. And essentially, that reverse triangle is you know, sharing one border with it and then coming down, being defined by the masseter muscle at this point. So its limit is the masseter and then pulling in about like that and then you just fill it in. So now you've got one triangle, boom, 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 connecting to another triangle, boom, boom, boom. Both of these are describing what is essentially dead space. A masseter is here, so that's definable space. The depressor anguli oris is here, that's definable space. Okay, the mouth muscle is all right here, definable space. But the cheek, you know, you got three muscles and a lot of cheek fat. It's a little hard to define it. What happens in between the nodules at the side of the mouth and the master? Well, nice little triangle. Makes life much easier when you know those things. Because then you just put them in. And you can adjust them to fit your model, but you put them in and you go from there. So I hope this was useful. I hope this was interesting information and uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below and then check out our sculpting uh, facial ecorche workshop page. The link is in the description to this video.